All right, big news. I have in front of me a new optic from Primary Arms. This is uh, coming out today, the release of this video, to the best of my knowledge. I wanted to show this to you guys here. I got a little bit early version and um, wanted to unbox it here for you. So this, uh, if you can't already tell, is the new Gen 3 uh, Primary Arms 1 to 6 ACSS scope. So the 1 to 6 is something you guys have seen us use in the past. Um, same goes for the 1 to 8 SFP, second focal plane, which I have in front of you here. Um, this is the scope that we actually took out. Um, and I want to say we shot it at 420 yards. I'll roll in a little bit of video here um, on an 8 inch target uh, and then move to a 6 inch popper. Uh, and then we were able to hit that. I was so surprised we uh, went and shot for an empty paint can um, when we were able to hit that guy and I want to say two shots Which is pretty surprising for for that range. But anyway, this is the one to six version um, Just figured I'd open this here. So this scope um, is pretty popular uh, on the primary arms ACSS line to the best of my knowledge So I would I would guess if I had to make a wager. It's probably one of the most popular ones um, Pull this guy out here this may have been wrapped in plastic. I may have opened this already. can't remember, but um, as usual, it comes with instructions, gives you all the information you need on the reticles. Uh, you got a, you've got a, um, a lens cloth in there. Move this guy aside. Um, and let me see if I can find the, uh, the reticle information here for you, just real quick. Um, of course, the, the ACSS reticle is pretty much the same not a whole lot has changed however there is really one note to make so there's there's understanding the bdc which i love that they put the stuff in here some manufacturers aren't great about listing your zeros and you know what the holds are um primer arms does not have that problem so the big difference between this scope uh physically uh is two things one they've switched from using a dot uh, as your center to the chevron so like in the uh, R grid and the new one to eight right here. These all have the Chevron tip as opposed to the older one to six. It does have the dot. So the difference there is really um, instead of having to zero in the center of a dot, which is opaque uh, and kind of guess where you're going to be zeroing and only get your zero only so precise uh, with this option here, which is pretty close to the same size as the dot, you, you're able to pick out a fine point of aim at the tip of the chevron and utilize that for your zero. So not only do you have a more finer point of aim for shots where maybe partial engagement shots at close to medium ranges, but you've also got a much finer point of aim when it comes to zeroing the optic. So that way when you move to uh, your other options down the line, when you're going out to, you know, five, 600 plus yards, which is, you know, get out, getting out there for those non-precision 5.56 bullets, um, you're going to be, hopefully be more accurate at those other ranges because your zero is a little bit more fine-tuned. So that's the, the big, the big advantage there. And again, there's more information in here if you need it. Um, the other, the other, um, update here is that, uh, they are now using the same scope, uh, in scope two as the newer one to eight second focal plane. So you'll notice when we, when this was released, um, I made the note that it was kind of ironic that this one to eight is actually smaller and lighter than the gen two one to six, uh, because it is. So they've, uh, incorporated the one to six in the same scope and scope tube. So we have the same, uh, size, um, and I want to guess, I, I don't know on the weight, obviously my one to eight's an amount, which I'm not going to remove. So I'm not going to weigh these side by side, but you can check the specs on the website. I'll put the description or uh, the information in the description below. So anyway, um, same size. So you're losing, you're losing a little bit of size and a little bit of weight, which is pretty much a good thing. Uh, the big note I'll make with the one to eight, the newer one to eight here that I played with, uh, quite a bit now is that this is a really close to a true one X at one power. So that's a big advantage over some of the, the other older one to sixes. Um, it's not quite true one, one X at one power, but it's very, very close and it's closer than the older one to six model. So that's one thing I like. Um, so those are really the two, the two big differences there. Um, did you come with scope caps, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but you can fold them back, um, all the way onto themselves. Um, I want to say that the batteries are included in this. There is illumination and as I crank it up there, you can see it kind of right in the camera. I'm not sure if it's going to be able to focus, but, um, you guys saw the reticle earlier. So actually let me, let me make the camera focus here. See if I can get it to work. 
there we go. So cranked up to 11 power, um, which is, is more than daytime bright. You've got your wind holds, uh, obviously your elevation holds. Um, and then on the far right, you have your auto ranging feature, which allows for ranging of um, an 18 inch wide uh, man sized targets um, out to your 800 yard mark. Uh, and you can do that by, by width of the target, or you can do that by height of the target. And then of course you have your, your mover dots from zero to um, 300. And those are the big black non illuminated dots right on the center line. So I'm not sure if you can see that Chevron tip in there. Uh, the reticles tend to look a little smaller in the camera than they do when you're looking through them after you're set up on a rifle. So let me, let me adjust the camera here real quick. In fact, I'll just move it back um, and set it here. This is my buddy's um, BCM, 16 inch BCM standard upper receiver. These are awesome upper receivers if you're, if you're on a budget, but you want something that's gonna last you a lifetime um, and is gonna run when you need it. Um, they have the fixed front sight post, which is more than fine for shooting man-sized targets out to pretty much almost any range. Um, and on this, this upper, he has the older one to six. So this is the newer one to six. Tighten this down here a little. And as you can tell, hopefully, um, the angle is not the best. Let me move it here. Uh, as far as length goes, um, it's shorter up front probably by about half an inch and it's shorter in the back by maybe almost an inch. So again, you're, uh, you're losing a little weight, you're losing a little size, you're gaining a Chevron, um, you're gaining a, a little bit of, um, uh, more truer one power on the lowest setting. Um, and as far as glass comparison, I haven't sat down and compared these two side by side. I want to say they're pretty similar. Um, but again, I don't really want to comment on that quite yet because uh, again, I haven't shot them perfectly, you know, right side by side at the same time, looking at them back and forth. So a little bit of difference on the markings here too. This one's marked primary arms, ACSS. This one's just marked ACSS, so. So one more note to make here, and I'm not sure if you can tell through the camera or how well you can tell, but uh, I noticed one more difference on the reticles. Um, looking at the auto ranging feature on the right, this is the older Gen 2, one to six. You'll notice that the the auto ranging is marked three four five six seven eight so each line is marked um, moving down to the newer gen three one to six which this is basically how the reticle appears minus the 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 orange and green text of course um, the auto ranging on the new model has been updated to reflect what's basically in the one to eight um, and that is uh marked uh four six and eight so each uh everything else is just up for you to look at so they're alternating instead of giving you each and every single one um, and they're not giving you the ability to range um, the 300 meter so you're starting at 400 which is fine because um, your 300 meter ranging is more or less in the horseshoe here so one more note there i wanted to make note of anyway that's about it i just wanted to show this to you guys um, i'll put the the price and everything for the um this optic uh for what it goes for on the primer arms website down below so if you guys have any questions on the price um you can go ahead and jump down there and take a look at it if you guys got any questions for me let me know in the comment section i'll, I'll answer those um just to kind of knock some out of the way um i feel like i've said this before i don't know if you know everybody watches every single video so i don't i don't mind being a little bit redundant uh the acss reticle in my opinion is and i'm not getting paid to say this stuff all right uh is hands down the best bdc reticle uh, on the market, um, not only for 5.56, five, because it works especially well with AR-15s, but this is, in most cases, a cross-compatible um, setup here. Depending on where you're doing your zero, you can adjust your zero slightly to get this stuff to match up to 5.45 five, uh, five, four, five by 39 and 308. Um, everything you know matches up pretty darn well, especially when it comes to shooting man-sized targets, uh, which is really what BDC reticles are designed for. Um, if you're looking at, um, shooting pop cans at, you know, seven, 800 yards, which is pretty far out there. BDC reticles are not the best option for that, obviously. But, um, when it comes to getting on target quickly, uh, it, and putting rounds on target with, uh, effective first round hits, um, BDC reticles are great. And especially when they've been done well And the ACSS is again, in my opinion, literally the best, 
uh, BDC reticle on the market. Um, there's nothing out there at this time that competes with it, uh, which is really a shame to be honest because anybody else doing BDC reticles, if you're seeing this, you need to step up your game. All right, having the ability to do ranging of man size targets, height and width, which is extremely important. Um, having wind holds for five miles per hour out to these ranges um, is, is extremely helpful. Um, other reticles that don't have them, uh, you know, adding this on uh, and adding this physical, these physical dots into your view is not obtrusive at all. Uh, it does not in any way make the reticle busy or less usable. It's extremely helpful to have those. Um, anytime you start doing practical shooting past, you know, one, 200 yards, you'll start to find out that most days, especially where we shoot, there's, there are very few days where there is not wind. So these are extremely helpful. So you guys got any questions, put them down below. I'll talk to you later.